Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Chelsea Olson and I hope you are enjoying this block of the month series. If you haven't had a chance to check out the February block, I will try to post a link up here. If not, I will make sure to list it in the description below for you to follow along with our Swedish heart block. For the month of March, we are actually going to have two blocks, a beginner and an advanced block. Today's video will cover the beginner block. And since it's March, we are gonna make this fun clover. It's a modified pattern from Craftsy. Um, I just needed to make it a little bigger so it would fit our 12 inch finished size. So, um, once again, I will post a link to the pattern below in the description so you can print that out and follow along. So to get started though, let's go ahead and talk about what you're gonna need for this block. You're gonna need 12 one and a half inch squares, two one and a half by six and a half inch rectangles, two one and a half by eight and a half inch rectangles, and then you're gonna need a, some border pieces for out here. Um, I cut these, if you're getting this in the kit, uh, I thought about this after the fact, being a beginner block, but um, I cut these at two and a half inch in width. Um, if you're more advanced, you should be fine at cutting these at two and a half inch, but if you're a beginner and you're digging this out from your own stash, I might recommend cutting these at two and three quarters of an inch. And then that way you'll have plenty of extra to trim it up to be exactly 12 and a half inches. Regardless of what width you cut it, you're gonna need two of them at eight and a half inches in length and two at Now for the clover leaves, you're gonna need random assortments of greens. And what I decided to do was pick out four lights, four mediums, and four darks. This just gives you some contrast and really makes the block pop. So um, if you bought a kit from me, this is what you're going to be getting. If not, go ahead and grab your fabric and meet me back here. Um, just a quick idea, all of these were from my scraps at one and a half by three and a half inches. You, I have so many little green scraps that you should probably, this is a great scrap buster, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So go hit your scrap bin before you start cutting into your fabric. If you decide to go scrappy with this block, you can just get some strips from your scrap bin. Just iron them out. These are all pretty wrinkly. I just got them good to go. I mean, this piece is bigger than I actually need. So you're not gonna need a whole lot for this. The biggest thing you'll need is a two and a half, a full two and a half inch strip by the width of fabric uh, for your border. So when you're picking from your stash, what is helpful is if you choose four lights, four mediums, and four darks. Um, that way you can have one of each color in the four different segments. Um, so that should help it be a little more balanced and even. Another thing, um, these glasses, I forgot where I got them, but they show you value. I'm gonna see if I can put this in front of the... Okay, do you see that? That shows you grayscale. So see how my ones on the left are a lot lighter? Then I have the medium and then the much darker. These glasses are great to help you establish grayscale. Another thing you can do is always take a photo with your phone, um, turn it to black and white, but these are really nice to just, um, maybe, or you're rearranging blocks. You can have these on and wear them while you're working. And they're a great way to, um, cause I actually had this fabric over here and I swapped this green and this one because of the way, let me show you, because of the way, um, oops. <laughs> um, see how that actually looks lighter when you have this grayscale like that? So I swapped them and it's because of this, these lighter bits 
in the pattern that brightens it. But even though when you look at it like this, it to me, this seems darker. Um, this actually will be lighter than this one on a small scale. So that can help you choose your fabrics from your stash. So to start with, let me move these. These are all the sashing strips, border strips. Let's move these guys out of the way. Um, what I like to do before I start and head over to the sewing machine is just sort these into the three, like the groups of three that I'm going to want to sew them together. So should be okay, but sometimes like if you have batiks or, um, you know, solids or prints that you might want to you know, don't put all the batiks together and then all the prints together, all the, so this kind of gives a good variety if I sort them ahead of time before I just randomly start sewing. Um, so I just sort, so see like these are kind of the same olive tones. I kind of wanted to break those up a little bit. Um, so that's why I do this ahead of time. You see, and I kind of like this better with that just varying the sizes of the scale because these two these two are kind of the same scale uh, you probably can't see from there but they're kind of the same scale so I don't want those right next to each other so that's why I substituted this in so things like that to think of you know are some ideas so now that I have them sorted how I like I will meet you over at the sewing machine and um, give a zoomed in close up of this so you can see this a little bit better. So after you get your fabric sorted in a variety that you like, carry them over to the sewing machine. I don't know why I grabbed all three. You just need a light and a medium for now. And you're going to sew these together, right sides together. Uh, everything will be a one quarter inch seam. And hopefully this camera doesn't shake too much. Let's see. I'm just trying to do a better angle for you guys. I know last time it was hard to see. I think the angle looks okay, but my sewing isn't very straight when I'm looking at the camera. Gosh, hopefully it's not too bumpy for you guys. But you're just gonna take the lights and the mediums and sew those together. Okay, now that those are sewn, quick tip before <laughs> you start sewing. You may wanna take a photo of how you had these arranged because you may forget which pile they go in. So that way, if you take a photo, you'll know which set goes with which dark, and you can use that as a reference. So luckily, I took a photo for you guys <laughs> for the video, so I was able to look back and see where they went. So now, we're gonna sew the darks to the medium color, medium print. And you will do this for all four sets. Sometimes batiks do actually have a right side or a wrong side. Um, you can see like this side looks better to me. This side, uh, this isn't as crisp right here, these lighter green colors. So even though it's batik, sometimes it's good to check if, uh, it's a right or wrong side. Okay, so now that I have these lined up, I'm gonna speed this up so I don't bore you to death. I'll meet you over at the ironing board when these are done. Okay, so the pattern says to press towards the middle strip, which will be your middle green color, medium green color if you um, we're doing the same thing I was doing. So I'm just pressing the, setting the seams first. I know we talked about this last month, but basically you wanna do this to help bury the thread into the 
fabric and it just helps the block lay a bit flatter. So after I do that, I just give it a quick finger press and making sure that the seams are pointing towards the middle. And then I will just set my iron on there. Remember not to actually iron, just press. Use the weight of the iron to set the seam flat. And just hold there for a minute. And my clapper is over here. Whoops. This just helps hold that heat in there and keep that seam a little flatter. So now we'll set these seams. And let me move this out of the way. Trying to make sure I stay in frame. Um, and now, if you feel, if you want to, you're welcome to press these seams um, after you sew the first seam. You don't have to sew them both. It's just easier for me to not have to move the camera. But whenever I made this block as a test block, I actually came and pressed it after I sewed the light and the medium together. And then I came back and added the dark green strips. So whatever you would like to do, and just press all of these again towards the middle. Something else I noticed I did and didn't really talk about since this is the beginner block, um, I when I was sewing these strips together, I did something what's known as chain piecing, where I just kept sewing without cutting my threads. Um, so I'll explain that a little more whenever we go to sew these together. But it's a good tip for a beginner. If you don't know about chain sewing, it will save you some time and also money since it will save you on thread. All right, so this will be the last one. And then we will need to um, sew the corners on and snowball the corners. This will be similar to last month's block. So if you didn't make that and you are a beginner, I would recommend trying that block first because these are a lot tinier pieces and it will be a little more difficult but uh, last month the snowball corners were um, I think they were like two and a half inch squares so that'll give you some practice before you attempt these smaller ones so that these will turn out better and now I'm going to meet you back over at the cutting board so that we can draw our lines for our snowball corners. All right, so now that you've sewn all your green strips together, we need to prepare our one and a half inch squares. So you just take a ruler and line it up from diagonal to diagonal and draw a line. I'm just using a regular number two pencil. You can use any marking pencil you'd like. Just make sure to draw lightly and I um, always do it on the back side of my square if you have a right and wrong side that is and we'll just continue this again from corner to corner line up your ruler draw a light line this will be your stitching line when we add these to the green stripe units and just continue this for all 12 squares and then bring them over to the sewing machine and I will meet you there. All right, now that you have everything pinned together, I just put pins on the two that I'm not sewing just to kind of keep them roughly in place so I don't accidentally flip them. Um, we're going to start sewing. So I start 
by, okay, this is sort of what I was talking about last month. I know that I'm gonna cut this corner away. So you're gonna wanna stitch on the line or just to the outside of it. If you cut, if you sew just to the outside, then that gives you a little more wiggle room um, because if you sew on the inside, when you fold this corner back, it's gonna be a little bit short and your square isn't gonna be square. So try to sew directly on the line or just to this outside corner. And I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way. I apologize if it's in the way. It's hard to sew and look at a camera all at the same time. So this is what I'm talking about with chain sewing, okay? I'm gonna go back and cut my thread. Instead of cutting the thread here and pulling this out and having to hold this thread to start again, I'm just gonna, I sewed right off the edge and I'm leaving my needle down. And then I'm gonna take my next set that I'm gonna sew, make sure that my square is lined up. I lift up my presser foot and put the needle just to the edge of where I'm getting ready to start stitching. That way, when I start to stitch, I first of all, I don't have to hold the thread, so I'll have both my hands to start this piece off with, but it also saves time and thread in general because there's like, you know, this much thread in between versus having to cut a tail this long every single time. So this is what quilters refer to as chain piecing. And if it's a technique you're not familiar with, I would really recommend it. Oops, sorry, I think I bumped the camera. So you're just gonna go along and keep sewing all of these squared snowballed uh, corners. And then we will um, cut them away. Now last month, I showed you a trick to draw another line a half inch away from here to make a half square triangle. But if you do that with these, your half square triangle would be about that big. So <laughs> with these, I just actually throw the corners away when we cut them. So I will show you that. But uh, basically, you don't have to worry about uh, drawing that or stitching those extras. So um, I, I made a reference. I started in my top left corner sewing and then went around clockwise so that I could keep track of what order they go in to, go in to sew. So I lay them back out um, after I cut them so that I remember which one goes where. Um, the other thing you could do is take a picture like before and then that way you'll know how to let, line them all back up whenever you get done snowballing these corners. So see how to start with this first one since I have these tails. Oop, I have to hold on to them or it makes a big rat nest on the bottom of my piece. So now that I've my needle has gone into the fabric, I can let go of these. But when you chain sew, you only have to hold on at the very beginning. So it's really nice and keeps your hands free to hold your fabric to sew a straighter line. Now you're welcome to keep your needle, or I mean your pin in while you're stitching, but I, I don't like to stitch over my pin, so I just, uh, it's a small enough square that I just take it out and hold it in place and then stitch instead of trying to stitch halfway then remove the pin. So I will speed this up and then I will meet you over at the ironing table. All right, before we go to the ironing table, I am just going to cut away these outside corners at roughly one quarter of an inch. 
These do not have to be perfect. If you're worried about if you sewed them right, you can always lay this out real quick before you cut the corners away. But if you did a pin on there and made sure really well when you're laying this out that you should be okay. All right, now it's time for pressing. So we will set the seams. And it's a little easier if you use your right hand to iron anyway. I'm sure if you use your left, you'd probably just rotate it that way. But set the seam and then you can roll these back um, just to get them started finger pressing because that is a bias since that's a you sewed on the diagonal, that's a bias seam, so you want to be careful about stretching it. So that's why I like to carefully finger press first and make sure there's no tucks in there. So if you lay it kind of like this and then press from here, they kind of just roll open. Um, if I have it the other way, I was finding that these tips, I was kind of pressing them weird. So if you just start at this one and go counterclockwise, it kind of makes it easier. And let's see, Whew, not left-handed, but yeah, that would be right. So if you're left-handed, then put it, the corner down there and just go, uh, go around that way. <laughs> that was so graceful. Okay. So I just kind of hold these and uh, keep that steam in to get those really nice and flat and we'll just repeat for all four all right now let's go back to the sewing machine to sew these together Okay, now that you have your clover laid back out, we are gonna pin. So we're gonna pin these top two together and then these two together and we're gonna stitch along these two seams. So we will have to match where these uh, background pieces come together. So I'm gonna show you a little trick because um, nesting the seams, you can't really do that because they're both press towards the background. So I'm going to show you a little trick um, about how to sort of do this. So the side that, um, see how the back of this seam is all straight? This is the straight side. The back of this one has a lot of seams here. Leave the one that has a lot of seams alone. And then the one that is just this strip only, just kind of pinch this seam back the opposite direction and then nest it. You don't want to push too hard because you really do want that seam to be pressed actually towards this corner. But if you do that just enough to feel that seam nested, those two background triangles, then you can put, oops, sorry, my thumb's in the way. You can put a pin in there on this side and a pin in on this side. Oops, make sure the uh, this edge is still lined up too. Oh man. <laughs> there we go. This is the trickiest part of the whole entire block. Okay? But you can do it. So then, put a little pin here, make sure you don't go through this seam allowance because, and you can put it back, push it back down through because you're gonna want to flip this back up like that. So both seams are going this direction, but just by holding that in place and finger nesting it, I guess, and pinning, then this way, those should match up. So let's see. Let's see if it worked. If 
you feel more comfortable, like I said, I know this is a beginner block. If you feel more comfortable putting a pin at the beginning and the end, you're welcome to do that too. Um, I like to just get it started a few stitches and then that kind of becomes a pin in like a third hand because it holds everything in place if you have your needle down. And this is where the stiletto comes in handy. I told you about last month. You can help to keep these seam allowances pressed the direction that you want them to stay because this one's wanting to try to flip up this way. So you can use that to hold it down. And then at the same time, I'm going to line this bottom. Okay, I can't do that without my hand. <laughs> line this bottom edge up. And I'll just put a pin in there too. My, uh, my piecing isn't the best right now because I am trying to do so many things at once and make sure I'm not blocking the view. So, this is off a little bit, but just hold a pin in there and it'll be fine. And you can just hold it like this tight and the feed dogs will take care of that slack anyway. So it'll be okay. So it's just using your stiletto or if you don't have a stiletto, you know what else you can do? A seam ripper. Look, same, same difference, but a stiletto is a little nicer, but this works too. But hey, when you're starting out, you can't buy everything all at once, can you? So I just get as close to that pin as I can without sewing over it. I do not sew over my pins. It can mess up the timing. Um, and then I just, so this is where like you can hold this still together because I took the pin out, right? Now this stiletto becomes a pin and I get go real slow and I stitch just right over that seam. Let's see if I can zoom in. There you go. Yep. So I just stitch right past this seam right here. And then I'll keep going. Get as close as I can to that pin. Remove it. And then since my um, this wasn't exactly straight from my piecing, uh, I'll just kind of tug this pin a little bit and keep it taut. I don't, you don't want to pull too hard so that the machine can't still pull the fabric through. But if you keep a little tension there, then it will, the feed dogs just eat that extra fabric up and then it makes your uh, edge, raw edges down here end up matching up. So we'll take that pin out, use our stiletto, and then sew to the edge. All right, so normally I would go ahead and sew this one too, but I'll show you. Let's see if it turned out okay. Cut our threads. You always want to cut your threads because um, I'm a long armor, and when you go to quilt your quilt, these will show up through your front. You'll see them. Ah, looky there. Pretty good. So let's do the exact same thing to these bottom ones. So we're gonna put right sides together and we're gonna wanna pin here. Let me grab some pins real quick. And so this time, see this? Now this time all of our seams are here. So let's just flip it. So just give that a little pinch and nest these seams. So I can feel those lock right there, okay? Now I'm making sure that this is lined up up here along this seam. This still feels nested. And I will go ahead and put a pin right through here. Just making sure not to grab this so that I can still flip this back. If it won't flip back, just take the pin out and try again, no big deal. So a still pinch here, make sure it still feels nested. And then we'll take a pin and pin it on this. Ouch, that was my finger. <laughs> Don't do that. Pin through on that side as well, so both sides of the seam. And then flip this back. So see how it's pressing the right direction now? They're both facing this corner 
and wow this is off a lot so hey it's okay we all do it no big deal so since this is off so much I'm gonna go ahead and pin the bottom again all right we have a lot of a lot to make up oh I see what happened see here do you see how that is sticking up a lot more over the green? This is actually too big because I went too far. You know how I said go a smidge to the outside? I went too far to the outside on this line, so this square is too big. And that's why they're not lining up. So what we're going to do is just kind of eyeball it like that. That's where it should be. I'm just lining up these green pieces instead in the corners of that snowball corner. Or you could just go take it and trim it up. And we'll put a pin in there. There we go. So I'll just trim it up whenever I get done sewing it. See how I just kind of kept tension here um, by keeping tension here it sucked that extra bit up and now it's just fine so I'm getting as close to that as I can get and keep sewing and I'm past that seam so I'm going to go ahead and take that pin out so that I can work in the extra. Another thing you can do, whatever you have more fabric of, if you put it towards the bottom, your feed dogs actually take the most up from there. So definitely put your longer piece on the bottom if you can, which is why I stitched this way versus the other way. So nice little tips for you guys. If you make a mistake, it can always be fixed. And there's always a seam ripper. All right, let's see how it looks. Not as nice as the other one, but hey, it's okay. It's still pretty good. If it bothers you, you can rip it out and do it again. So now that these are done, you're gonna wanna press, since this one has a lot of seams, you're gonna wanna press towards the one that is just the plain stripe and this way so that way they're pressed opposite so this is pressed this way this is pressed this way and that way the middle will nest so i'll press those and i'll be right back okay as you can see i have pressed these seams so we are going to put right sides together now and let's start at the middle seam because that's the easiest and we will just nest those and make sure they're lined up and put a pin on either side of that nested seam. Okay. All right. So now let's go back to this first one. So once again, this is the side without a bunch of seams. See, that one has a lot. So we will press this back next to that one and put the pins in. And then pull that back. Do the same thing down here. And what's really important is not so much at the tip, but a quarter inch down because that's where you're going to actually sew so that's where you really want to make sure it's good and nested and then we will stitch oh see how this started to flip I just lift my presser foot and use the stiletto to smooth that back out get close to that pin remove it Hold this still in place with my stiletto. Remove this pin. Now we're coming up on the 
center seam. So hold this in place, stitch past it, remove that pin. Just go slow. When you start piecing smaller, you really do need to slow your speed down some to really help maintain control. All right, let's take that out and have a look. See the center seam looks nice. And that one looks good. And that one does too. So not too shabby. So then we will press this one open to help reduce bulk. In case you did not see last month's video, this is called a strip stick. And I will include the link below where you can purchase one. But I love it for pressing seams open. I feel like I cannot <laughs> do a very good job without it anymore. Um, so I just basically put it on here and get it started with my hands. And then I, you start here at this edge and just go along. Let's see if I can zoom in, keep you in. There we go. And you just iron along that seam but the because this is raised up it keeps you from flipping any of these previously sewn seams um, from flipping them the wrong direction so see these stay where you had them before and it gives a good start so once I do that then I press it flat and just hold it there and then I like to actually flip it over this way and press from this side as well um, and since the actual piecing is done besides the sashing I like to just kind of go over the whole thing because we're getting ready to add um, you know pieces to the whole length and I just give it a little steam to kind of help hold it flat um, another thing that I love is a homemade spray I made. Um, it's kind of like Mary Ellen's Best Press or Flatter Spray, except that's a little cheaper. Um, and I just put it in a spray bottle, but it's half vodka. And don't use flavored because that might be sticky. I'm not for sure. Just plain vodka, any kind. I go to Costco and buy the big bottle for cheap. Um, and then, so it's half vodka, half water, and then I'll put a couple of drops of um, essential oil in if you want to have it scented. If you want it unscented, then you can leave that out. It's not important, but um, I just have some essential oil I don't use anymore and wanted to use up. So I just give it, this spray bottle is great too. Um, I got this at a quilt show, so I can't really give you a link, but I know I have bought some on Amazon, these Mr. Bottles. Um, it gives a good amount of spray per, and uh, very fine mist. So I like to give that a good spray, kind of hand press that down. And then, once again, press, not, you know, iron. Let the weight of the iron do the work. And then you can give it a little steam too if you want. And then if you kind of just let it cool where, you're, where you ironed it, it'll help to hold it in place too. But look at how much flatter that lays before I, you know, compared to before I sprayed that. All right, now it is time to add our sashing strips. Um, it doesn't really matter which side, um, unless you particularly want one at the top or the bottom, um, but you're gonna add these to the left side and the right side, and we'll stitch those on. And then we'll add these to the top and the bottom after we do that, and then we'll press. So let's go back to the sewing machine. Okay, so I'm back at the sewing machine, and we are sewing on the left sashing, sh sashing strip. <laughs> it's hard to say. Um, so I just gave those a little pin. As you can see, see how this is off a little bit? That's once again from 
me sewing this snowball corner a little too big. So what I like to do is actually keep this strip on top and then just keep my presser foot aligned with this strip instead of following along here. And then that way you'll get um, a good one quarter inch, um, one quarter inch seam of where it should be. I know it's the right size, the block itself, because this was six and a half inches and it still lined up like I didn't have to stretch anything. So still is gonna be just fine. And then we'll just do the exact same thing to the other side. Now that that's done, we will take this to the ironing board and press towards these sashing strips. And then we'll do the exact same thing with the top and the bottom strips and then press out towards those as well. Okay, another teaching moment. This one is quite a bit bigger than this. So we need to have this top block be this length because that is eight and a half inches, which is what we need for this block to work. So I went ahead and pinned at the top and bottom. I get it started, remove my pin, and the side that's bigger you put on the bottom. You're going to want to eat up some of that extra fabric, but at the same time stretch this top piece so that um, at this point when it's done adding these two strips on, it'll be closer to the eight and a half inches. Um, so as I'm sewing, I am keeping tension here to kind of help keep these um, pieces basically pulling, keeping this kind of more taut so that it will um, take up some of that extra fabric. And then I'm just using, since I'm having to hold here, like I said, this is where a stiletto is great because you can kind of pull and push as you need, which is why I like if you have a setting where you can keep this presser foot down all the time, um, it basically becomes a third hand because it pinches and holds up there. So that is why I prefer to always have that. And I use a knee lift, um, knee lift bar to, to lift it up if I need to. And by the time I've now gotten to this part, all of that extra fabric has been taken up. There you go. That's how you deal with extra fabric. And I'm sure I'll have to do the exact same thing on the other side. But that is why I was saying, especially if you're a beginner, these are small pieces. It makes it harder. If you're off a little bit, and you notice it a lot more in a smaller block than a larger block. So if you wanted to make those outside green strips a little bit bigger, and then that way, if you're off some, your block will still be perfect when you go to assemble your quilt top, if you're gonna make this into a quilt, like a full size quilt. But it's also good for a block of the month because we're gonna be submitting these. Everyone's quarter inch is a little different. So when you go to put these blocks together, so this way you, there's plenty of room to square them all up and then that way they go together better. So I'm just gonna do the exact same thing on this side. We're gonna press out and then we will add the green strips the exact same way as the white ones. All right, so now that we have those pressed, you're gonna add the green strips on. You're gonna wanna add these to the short side. See, these are the short green piece. So you're gonna wanna attach it to the side that has the shorter um, side because that's actually the left and right. If you put it on the top and then you add it, these these seams change and it looks weird. So you always want to add, you know, your shorter pieces on the same side and then your longer pieces on the same side. Okay, now that we sewed those and pressed them open, I did the exact same thing to this side, and I'm going to show you what I did. I this side is longer, so I'll start by pinning. This first side here. And then I go to the far end and put a pin in here. And then since this is kind of a longer seam, um, I basically pull here and stretch 
sorry, I'm trying to talk with a pin in my mouth too. <laughs> I pull here and stretch, and then I kind of walk my hands into the middle and pinch it like that. And that way I know it's roughly the center where that should line up. So that kind of draws up the same amount. See how this looks even about how much should be taken up and eased in instead of all of it being eased in here, all of it being eased in here, it kind of splits that amount up so that it'll be evenly distributed. And once again, since this is the bigger piece, we're going to flip it over and sew with that on the bottom and that will help, oop, that will help to take up that extra fabric. And then instead of holding the actual end, since I'm trying to ease in just to this middle part, this middle pin we put in, I'm going to hold there and give the tension. See that? And just by keeping my finger there and a little bit of pressure, it's taking that extra bit of fabric in. So I get as close as I can, remove the pin, and now I move to this bottom pin and keep add the tension and you can kind of pull from the edge here to make sure that this that these edges here are still lining up you can even use you know a hand here to basically add another pin in a way but you just keep that tension enough that the machine can still take the take your piece in it's not holding it back but it is given enough tension to take that extra fabric up and that's all there is to it. And see how it ended at the same, um, same length. So it will be a little wavy. You can see it here uh, from the extra, from it being just a little bit bigger. But when you go to press it out, it should, it should be okay. So all you need to do now is press these out towards this green fabric and your block will be complete. All right, so after you press the strips towards the outside, you have a completed clover block. So that concludes the block of the month for the uh, beginner block for March. Um, like I was saying earlier, I definitely would recommend using a two and three quarter inch strip. These are small pieces for a beginner, so if I had an opportunity to go back and I hadn't already made the kits, I would definitely do that so that you can square these up to the perfect um, 12 and a half inches so that they'll finish at 12. Um, but this is the block. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. And I look forward to uh, seeing you around for the advanced clover block of the month, uh, which I will be filming next. So stay tuned and look out for that one and I hope to see you around. Thanks. Bye.